So the USDA just updated the plant hardiness zone map for the first time since 2012. And there were actually some pretty big changes for a lot of regions in the US. I just wanted to take a few minutes today to break down exactly what that means and how we as gardeners can prepare for the next growing season. If we haven't met before, hey, my name is Anna and I'm here at Bright Lane Gardens. I love to talk about all things related to gardening and the USDA map is a huge part of that. To get started, we should really just talk about the USDA map, what it means and why it was introduced in the first place. So the USDA hardiness zone map is actually a collection of data that calculates the lowest average minimum temperature any region can receive. And the goal of this map is to assist farmers, gardeners, growers on what plants can thrive in a certain region and which plants are unlikely to survive based on these lowest minimum temperatures. The USDA hardiness map is split into 13 zones, which are then split further into sections A and sections B, with section A being the colder and section B being the warmer of that specific zone. Each zone is separated by 10 degrees Fahrenheit meaning zone 7A is separated by 10 degrees Fahrenheit from zone 7B. Now, the goal of this map is simply to tell you as the gardener, the farmer, the grower, which crops and plants you can successfully grow and keep alive through the winter months, bringing back to life in the spring. There are a whole slew of perennial plants that we cannot grow as perennials here in Michigan because our temperatures simply get too cold during the winter and the roots cannot survive them. So I look closely at the USDA hardiness zone and I really depend on that when I plant my perennial gardens. So let's look at a previous USDA map. This particular USDA hardiness zone map is actually from 2015. Now keep in mind, this has not been updated since 2012. So these zones would have remained the same from 2012 up until just a few days ago. Now comparing that to an updated 2023 map from the changes they just made, you might notice that a significant portion of the country was actually increased by at least one zone into a warmer growing zone. We live in an area of Northwest Michigan that has a lot of lake effect protection, which means that we actually did not shift zones from an environmental perspective and from the perspective of a lot of our local farmers, this is a great thing. Now up in the region that I live, we have a lot of farmers that grow orchards that have cherries or plums or apples. And all of these plants require a minimum number of chill hours in order to successfully produce fruit. So from their perspective, it's a good thing that we didn't shift too much. So I'm very curious to see what will happen in the future. This is certainly not the first time that the USDA map has been updated. As I mentioned before, the last time was back in 2012. As we get better at collecting data, as we have more accurate tools, and as we can better foresee the future, I do think that a lot of times these changes will become more frequent and will give us a more accurate description and a more accurate prediction of what we can and cannot grow in certain zones. A couple things to note on that USDA map is it does not account for precipitation at all. So there's a lot of plants that can survive in colder temperatures as long as it's in a drier environment. Take for example, the Colorado mountains are, is a very dry environment that can reach very frigid temperatures, but those plants survive because the soil stays nice and dry. Now in Michigan, we have a ton of precipitation where I live. So there's a lot of those plants that even though we don't get as cold as some of those mountain temperatures, we have way too much moisture in the ground and those plants just cannot survive. So the USDA hardiness zone map doesn't necessarily take that moisture level into account. That's something that you as the gardener need to determine on your own. And lastly, my final word of warning is of course, you can never ever predict those extremely low temperatures that can sometimes sneak up in the middle of the winter or even in early spring that really just knock out a lot of your plants. A lot of the plants that are more fragile and maybe on the higher end of your growing zone are more susceptible to succumbing to higher moisture levels in the soil or maybe an early spring frost. So the USDA map can't do a great job of predicting some of those more extreme temperature or precipitation swings that your region might experience. This is a really interesting topic to me and I'm excited to talk more on it. Please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in with me today and I sure hope to catch you next time.